One more second. Hey, Ms. Wood. I'm well. All right. Um, that again. There we go. Um, I think we've got enough folks here to get started. We've got a final plea calendar for this morning. Every case on the calendar is also going to appear, if it's not resolved today, uh, on the May 30th trial calendar. So if you're thinking about when you'll be back here again on May 30th, which is a Thursday, we'll call the calendar and trial would start the following week. Um, today is final plea, so it is a day for defendants to resolve their cases if they choose while they still have the ability to withdraw a plea if the sentence they get is more severe than they ask for. That's the process. Um, our first three positions are Mr. Cozart, that's your client, Ms. Wood, and I think Ms. Nix is appearing virtually today. Is that correct, Ms. Nix? Yes, sir. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just running late. I will be there in probably 15 minutes. So I apologize for my tardiness. That's okay. Um, we could pivot to another case if you want to wait yes. for um, your cases. If you want to, we can do that. We've got a few that, well, we've got at least one that's not yours, so we could go to those. Yes, sir. Why don't we do that? So that would mean jumping to, I don't see Mr. Abate yet. Um, is Ms. Willingham, she is on. Hey, Ms. Willingham. Hi, Judge. And actually, I have position two for Mr. Cozart. Um, I know Ms. Nick has one and three, so we probably still would want to wait, I guess. But I did just want to at least bring that to the court's attention. Okay, you've got position two. That seems like maybe, well, I don't know. Um, which one the state it was one it was one that we actually made a offer on a while back and I know that it was a probation offer and considering position one I believe has a um man just looking at the charges I think it has a mandatory minimum of one year so I, I guess it would be something that we probably should wait to see where Miss Nix and Miss Wood are on that okay we'll do that um so, but you do have another case, which is um, Quinshelia Pittman. Is Ms. Pittman here? Yes. Hello? I heard her on the Zoom, Judge. All right. Well, let it add you to the spotlight. And Ms. Pittman, can you say something again? Here. Are you the thing that says iPhone? Yes. There you are. Okay. Um, and Ms. Wood, um, you are here. Let's, um, if you don't mind moving over a little bit so um, Ms. Pittman can see you. Um, let's talk about your case. So let's get on the record. Good morning, Ms. Rivers. Good morning. This is position 11 on our final plea calendar, State versus. Ms. Pittman. Uh, Ms. Pittman, you are charged with aggravated assault and possession of some kind of weapon during the commission of a felony. Um, you are appearing virtually. Your lawyer is here and the prosecutor is appearing virtually. 
Um, Ms. Wood, do you have all the discovery that you're aware of in the case? Yes, Judge, and I, I do expect a plea today. Okay. I just need to iron out the details with Ms. Willingham. And Got Ms. it. Pittman. Okay, so Ms. Pittman, um, uh, Ms. Wood believes you are resolving your case today. Hopefully that's not a surprise to you. Um, and so you are welcome to go back to mute and turn the camera off. Um, and Ms. Wood will reach out to you or I'll say your name over the speaker again um, when we are ready to handle your case. Does that work for you? Yes. Okay, um, then we'll call you back up, um, meaning I'll call your name again um, in a few minutes. All right, no problem. Thanks. All right. Mr. Jordan and Mr. Korn and Mr. Kowalski, position 12. We can talk about that case. Um, is your client here? Yes, he's right here. There he is. Great. Okay. Um, what are we doing? What is your understanding of what we're doing today? Uh, my understanding is the state's made an offer that Mr. Um, Kowalski will not be accepting, so we're ready to move it to the trial calendar where it already sits. Great. Let's get all that on the record. If you'd come up to the podium, please. And Mr. Jordan, is that, I'll make sure that microphone's on. I, I can't see if it's on or not. Is, okay, great. Green light. Like, Green light, that's all I need to know. All right, so this is position 12. It's 23 SC 191808, State versus Kowalski. Mr. Kowalski is here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, with his lawyer, Mr. Korn. Mr. Jordan is here for the state. Um, and Mr. Korn, um, your sense is that you've got all the discoverable materials in this case. I believe that I do, yes. Your Honor. Great. No, no issues you're aware of right now that we need to work through. Correct. Okay. Um, I didn't see any pending motions in the docket. That doesn't mean there wouldn't be motions in limine on the eve of trial, but I don't see anything else. Do you agree that the case is otherwise trial ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Jordan, um, if you'd put on the record, please, what the state's offer is for Mr. Kowalski. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in regards to this case, the state's offer is 10 to serve five, and that is uh, as to both counts, uh, the balance being probated, and that um, Mr. Kowalski register as a sex offender and follow special conditions of sex offender registry uh, and sex offender probation, and that he have no contact with the victim. Okay. Um, the requirement of registration, is that something that you would be requesting or it's something that if Mr. Um, Kowalski were found guilty or pled, if he pled guilty to these offenses, it would occur as a matter by operation of law? It would occur as a, a matter of operation by law. Yes. Okay. So that, that's not a sticking point in terms of working the case out. If, if Mr. Kowalski is convicted by a jury, found guilty by a jury, or enters a plea to these counts, um, whether you want it or not, um, there'd be the registration requirement. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure because that could be a sticking block if that was not required by law, but something the state was insisting on as, as part of the negotiations. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Kowalski, I want to make sure you understand the state's recommendation. If you were in a plea today, it would be to the charges in the indictment, both counts. The state would recommend a sentence of 10 years to serve five with the balance on probation. So five years in custody, those are parolable offenses. Mr. Korn can talk to you all about what your parole profile would look like. Um, and then you'd be on parole for whatever amount of time you didn't serve those five and probation for the rest of the time. Mr. Jordan mentioned the registry requirement. That's not really something that he could require or not require. It would occur by operation of law if you pled guilty or if you were found guilty by a jury. So I want to make sure you understand the state's recommendation, which is the 10 serve five. Okay. Um, you understand that Mr. Korn could advocate for a lower sentence. And if he did, um, and I went along with his sentence today, if you were going to enter a guilty plea, um, you'd be bound by your plea. But if I deviated from Mr. Korn's recommendation on your behalf, um, in any material way. So I'm, I'm making it up. But if he was saying, you know what, Judge, it should be two years to serve. So 10 serve two. And I said, no, nah, I think it should be 10 serve three. That's a material deviation. It's a more severe sentence. You'd be able to withdraw your plea. You know, Judge, I was not happy with any of this, but I was willing to take X. Um, but 
you gave X plus, and so I'm going to back out. You'd have the right to do that. No questions asked. Jury would never hear about it, and you could still go to trial. Today, you have that ability to back out if the sentence is more severe than what you asked for. You understand that? Okay. You are free to enter a plea at any time. You could, as the jurors are coming in, elbow Mr. Corr and say, we, we can't go through with this. I, I'm going to enter a plea. I will take that plea. What will change from today to then is your ability to say, no, thank you, if you don't like the sentence that I give you. So Mr. Corn could continue to advocate for a two-year sentence. By then, Mr. Jordan might be asking for more than five years. I don't know what he's going to do. That's his call. Um, the only thing that would change is your ability to withdraw. Much like if you were found guilty by a jury, you wouldn't get to say, well, you know, I, I don't like the sentence I got. You could say that part, but you wouldn't be able to say, so I want to do this trial all over again. Um, so I want to make sure you understand that. Um, we will, it sounds like you do. And it also sounds like through your lawyer, um, his announcement at the beginning, um, you are not interested in pursuing a plea at this time. Is that correct? No, you're not. Okay, great. Um, then this case will be on that May 30th trial calendar. You'll need to be back here for that. Um, Mr. Corn and Mr. Jordan, if things arise before then that I can assist with, let me know. Um, obviously, we'll deal with motions in limine um, uh, at the time we bring this in for trial. Um, you'll remain under all the conditions of your bond. Um, and I will see the three of you uh, on that day. If for some reason something changes between now and then, and there is a breakthrough, and there is even if it's a non-negotiated resolution, but there's a decision by the two sides that this should be a plea rather than a trial. Um, it is better for everyone if we fit that in before May 30th. May 30th would be a busy day. There'll be a million people in here. You might not want to take your plea in front of a million people, but you will if it's on that day um, rather than um, earlier, if something works out. If not, you've got a great trial attorney. The state has a great trial attorney. We'll try the case and let the jury decide it. Mr. Jordan, anything else on behalf of the state? Your Honor, just to be clear, in the initial uh, offer that was sent to Mr. Corn on March 13th, I did set today as the expiration date for the uh, state's offer. So that offer, since it has been declined, uh, the state is now moving forward. Okay, thank you for flagging that, because sometimes offers stay open until the trial date. This one doesn't. This offer expires today. Um, so uh, the other thing that changes after you leave here today would be um, you would not have the ability to tell Mr. Corn, hey, I, I want to take that deal now. Mr. Jordan might agree to resurrect it, but Mr. Corn wouldn't have any contractual ability to say, no, you offered, we accept, you can't back out of your offer now, um, which would be the case if, if today you said, I want to do this, Mr. Jordan couldn't say, well, you know, I thought about it more, 10 do six. He offered 10 do five. You said no, um, which is your right. And Mr. Jordan is telling all of us that that offer then is being withdrawn or it expires. And that just means that if you decide you want Mr. Corn to engage in negotiations again, they don't start from scratch. The lawyers know each other. They know the case. But that offer may not be the starting point for the state. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Mr. Corn, anything on behalf of Mr. Kowalski? I think that about covers it, Judge. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Good seeing everyone. Um, I will see the three of you no later than May 30th. You are free to go. Thank you. Ms. Gordon, good morning. Um, we're waiting on Mr. Brown, who's running a little bit late, and his client, who is coming from a YDC. Okay. Um, and my thought is we handle Mr. Ware and Mr. Stewart at the same time. We've got Mr. Abate here, but once we get Mr. Brown and Mr. Stewart here, then we can have that come. Unless there is a security reason or, or other reason you think we should do Mr. Ware separately, because you're here and Mr. Abate is we could do that. Um, I just soon do the two together, in, okay. unless there is a concern. No, that sounds fine to me, Judge. That's fine, Judge. Okay, great. Yeah, the excuse doesn't go down because it should be able to handle prelim real fast. Is it a real fast prelim? It is. Okay. Um, we'll let you know if Mr. Brown or Mr. Stewart, well, they both, once they're both here, if you're not here, I'll have Ms. Nelson start making your phone vibrate. All right. So the next matter that is not Ms. Nix's is another Ms. Willingham case. It's Darius Seats. Is Mr. Seats here? 
And I think Ms. Strong is his attorney. It's actually my patient. It's you. Okay. You've become Ms. Strong. And judge in all fairness, um, because I also saw Ms. Strong, um, I actually assumed that maybe it was going to be private counsel, that he didn't qualify for PD, because I also noticed he was out of custody. So I thought nobody had entered. So I have not sent Ms. Uh, Feely a offer on this case. Okay. Um, we still need Mr. Seats to be here um, since he's enjoying his bond. So we'll wait a little bit and see if he makes it. Um, when did that switch, Ms. Feely? You've had the, have you and Mr. Seats connected? Yes. Okay. Um, I have notes from, and I thought I filed a waiver, but um, my name went off the counter, maybe not, but I will reach out to the next break. Okay. Yeah, please do just to see if he is on his way. Um, all sorts of limbs were in the streets, making it difficult to get around. And if limbs. he appears, I am prepared to uh, provide Ms. Seeley with an offer. So, Okay, yeah, why don't you shoot her an email? I'm looking. Okay. You did. Okay. Um, it looks like on January 11th, um, come on up, Odyssey. Ms. Seeley, you did um, file um, a waiver, and it is an entry of appearance. I don't know why it didn't flip over in the system, um, but I'll ask Ms. Nelson to do that. Um, you, you did what you needed to do, um, but it still shows Ms. Strong. Um, so when we reach a break point, if you'd reach out to Mr. Seats. Uh, I let Mr. Abate go. I shouldn't have done that. Your Honor, if that's if that's in regards to the final position on the calendar, yeah, Miss Parks. That's actually my case. Ah, fantastic. And I can step up to the podium. I see Miss Green is on the uh, Zoom. Yep. Let's get um, all those folks. Good morning, Miss Green. Can you hear us? Where do you see her? I see the client. And I, I saw I see Miss China Parks as well on the. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm here as well. All right. Are you Miss Parks? I am actually Miss Green. Oh, you're Miss Green. There we go. Now I got you on the screen. Couldn't see. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, whoops. I don't know who that was. Let's remove that. Um, so we'll get you on the screen. And um, Ms. Parks, can you please turn on your phone? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Want to get you. There you are. Great. Um, Mr. Jordan, if you angle that camera up a little bit, the last lawyer must have been shorter. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, Let's get on the record. This is position 17. It's State of Georgia versus China Parks. Ms. Parks is appearing virtually, as is her lawyer, Ms. Green. Good morning to both of you. It's 23 SC 191995. Ms. Parks, you are charged with second degree homicide along with vehicular homicide um, and a cruelty of children count. Ms. Green, um, do you feel like you've gotten, received all the discovery in the case? Um, I believe the state has an announcement in regards to that, Your Honor. Oh, well, let me let me start with Mr. Jordan then. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. There is uh, material outstanding discovery in this case. I do apologize to the court. This was a case where, uh, as it is still listed for uh, ADA Abade on the calendar, I did not realize that this case belonged to crimes against children until maybe about 10 days ago. Oh. Uh, in my review of the case, the material discovery that's missing is the uh, medical records for both Ms. Parks and also the driver of the other vehicle, uh, which was involved in this incident, which was a Mr. Hardy. Uh, of particular uh, concern to the state in this case, Your Honor, uh, the vehicle that Ms. Parks was operating had the child in it that uh, uh, unfortunately ended up deceased as a result of this accident. And I do believe that child belonged to uh, the defendant, Ms. Parks. Uh, 
in the police report, it does state that the initial responding officer uh, thought that both drivers may have been intoxicated. Without the medical records uh, for Mr. Hardy and Ms. Parks, uh, uh, the state does not feel comfortable extending an offer in this case. Uh, so we, we would humbly ask if we can receive another final plea date before ending up on a trial calendar, because I do believe those medical records can be dispositive of this case. Is the child the only decedent in the case, or did Mr. Hardy die as well? Mr. Hardy did not die, Your Honor. Unfortunately, okay. uh, the child was the only decedent. Okay, got it. Um, of course, is the answer. Um, not only would you want them, but Ms. Green absolutely would need that um, to um, be able to effectively advise her client um, if, and this is hypothetical, only Ms. Park showed up medically intoxicated. Um, that's a very different posture than if it's the reverse <laughs> and it was only Mr. Hardy. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Green and her client have discussed what was going on um, from that end, but it, it remains an unknown about Mr. Hardy. What's your sense of how quickly, sometimes medical records are deceivingly difficult to get? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we requested them, I believe, about a week ago, and we still have not received them yet. I would say that at the minimum, it would be at least a week from today, but it could be as long as two or three weeks from now. Okay. Do you need a waiver from anyone or you have an order or a subpoena um, to get them? I believe that we may have a subpoena to, uh, to uh, present to the court, Your Honor. I need to check with my investigator to be sure. Okay. Please do that um, because what, what I want to avoid is your first request is rejected because there wasn't sufficient process, if you will. Yes. If I need to order it, that's fine. I, I can't imagine Ms. Green's going to oppose getting this information. Um, and so she may even say, look, if we need to sign something to get it, let's get it. Obviously, none of us can speak for Mr. Hardy, yes. um, but there ought to be an order I can enter if a subpoena is not sufficient that would um, dislodge both those sets of records about how long ago was this incident? Are we running into, oh, we don't keep records from 2020? Your Honor, this was a 2021 incident, I believe. So I believe the medical records should still be accessible. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Green, anything you want to add to the mix? Uh, no, Your Honor. We'll wait for those records to be provided to the state. Okay. Ms. Parks, did you follow that discussion? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about it? No, sir. Okay. Um, I'll work with Ms. Nelson, my litigation manager, but my thought would be to, um, is that the only thing missing in discovery you are, that you're aware of? There's also the uh, autopsy report for um, the child, the uh, decedent child that's okay. currently missing. And we did request that a, a week ago. I don't believe there should be any delay in getting that. We should have that before the end of the week. Sure, because that should be completed if this occurred in 2021. And Absolutely. Getting something from the medical examiner's office ought to be simpler than, I'm assuming it's Grady, but wherever it was that the everyone was taken. Um, but in terms of whether it's Georgia State Patrol or Atlanta Police, all of the investigative materials, those have been turned over? Yes, Your Honor, that would include the crash report. I believe they also did a diagram. There are some videos which are on evidence.com, which I believe may need the evidence reviewer to play. I haven't been able to access them yet myself. Uh, but mm -hmm. as far as the South Fulton investigation, I believe we've sent over all of that discovery that's available to Ms. Green. Okay, good. Um, and I'm probing only because I want to make sure it sounds like the outstanding discovery isn't anything that would yield a motion. Um, it's in information, but you don't suppress medical records. Um, so if there was an issue with Ms. Parks having given a non Mirandi statement, Ms. Green's had all that information. I don't see any motions in the docket pending. So really, it would just, I would need to make sure both sides had a chance to digest what you get from Grady and what you get from the medical examiner's office. And we wouldn't need then to have a round of um, pretrial litigation. It would be get that information, let the two sides confer have a final plea, um, or, and I'll decide how I want to handle it. It could be that I put it on a trial calendar, but obviously preserve Ms. Parks's final plea rights because today wasn't a day to work through that. But we've just, we could get to the trial calendar sooner that way, as long as it's enough time between now and that date for you to get the records, for them to get to Ms. Green, and then everyone to process them. 
Yes, Your Honor. And okay. uh, as Ms. Green and I have discussed, since I know it's Your Honor's practice to uh, normally continue a case and put it on the trial calendar and preserve the final plea rights, we, uh, and I believe Ms. Green would uh, join me in this request, is that if it could not, if it's still going to be placed on the trial calendar, that it, it's not placed on the most immediate trial calendar. No, it won't, just because you'll need one, you got to get this stuff, and then yes. folks need to process it. Okay. Ms. Green, anything you want to add to that? No, Your Honor, that, that's correct. Everything he stated. Okay. Well, I'm glad you guys are agreeing on something. Um, so, um, Ms. Parks, you will get something. Did you get something in the mail about today's hearing? No, sir. I received the text. All right. Well, let me see what address we've got for you in the system, because I need to make sure you're getting notice. Um, missing court would be a bad development. Um, so I've got an address in Jonesboro. Do you live in Jonesboro? No, sir. Okay. So, um, Ms. Green, I'm going to ask you please to do a change of address form for Ms. Parks. We're sending things to a Falcon Crest Trail in Jonesboro, and that's okay. clearly not getting to Ms. Parks. So um, Mr. Jordan has more homework, get all the medical records and the ME's report. Um, but Ms. Green, if you would please confer with your client and then get a change of address filed in this docket so that um, Ms. Parks is getting um, notice of whatever's next. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right. That's it. Thank you all. You're free to go. Thank you. Bye-bye. What about um, Mr. Favors, Jacob? Oh, Ms. Nix is here now. Yes, sir. All right. Um, then let's go back to the beginning so we can go through in order. Um, Mr. Cozart is the first three positions. Ms. Willingham has position two, I learned. Um, you've got one and three, and Ms. Wood has all of them. Um, anything we need to talk about before we bring Mr. Cozart out? I need to speak with him, Judge. I have a new offer to convey. Okay. Then let's hold on that one. Um, Next is Marcus Jackson. Is Mr. Jackson here? Ms. Feely, you're 0 for 2. No, I'm expecting Mr. Jackson. So um, I have heard back from Mr. Seats, though. Okay. What's the report from Mr. Seats? I don't know the official report. He will be appearing maybe on Zoom. Okay. That's good. We'll wait for him to hit the line there. Um, and you'll reach out to Mr. Jackson. Okay. Uh, Willie Mabry is morning, the judge. online. Oh, he's in the back. Great. If we could bring Mr. Mabry out, please. And Judge, I have not received an offer from the state uh, on this case. So if they're willing to convey one today, I'll probably need some time to talk to him about it. Okay. Um, Ms. Nix, um, is that something you had sent to Mr. Mondelli and he missed it? Be mine. Oh, okay. It doesn't jump out at me from the um, charges that it would be someone else's. Miss uh, Willingham, are you still on the on the Zoom? She is. Miss Willingham. Okay. Yes, Judge, I'm on. It looks like this is a that we did the transfer paperwork and then it didn't get through to y'all. Well, then, and I'm sorry, Judge, I was cutting my video on. Um, judge, as I didn't actually get the file, I would not have made an offer. I'm not even sure if discovery has been turned over um, because I wasn't aware that the case had officially been transferred to me. Okay. Um, do you agree that it ought to head in your direction? I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't looked at it at all because I, I never got, um, it looks like it maybe would have just transferred. So I have not looked at this file at all. Okay. Ms. So Nix. I will take a look at it. 
Okay, I'm sure you will. I don't doubt that. Um, Ms. Nix, the, the basis for the transfer is that the alleged victim was someone with whom Mr. Do you pronounce it Mabry or Mabry? Mabry. Mabry. <laughs> someone in a relationship with Mr. Mabry? I'm pulling up the transfer form right now, Judge. Okay. Mr. Mondelli, while that's happening, um, do you have discovery in the case? No, Judge, I do not. I know this. I'm very well versed in the facts fully, and I know we're anticipating trying to resolve this short of trial. Um, but at the same time, uh, we do need to have that conversation with Ms. Willingham about this. So I'm happy to work as expeditiously as she can to have a discussion about this. Okay. Um, so it was your job to let me know if there was a discovery deficiency. Um, what shouldn't happen um, at the final plea is defense counsel says, and by the way, I don't have any discovery. My standing order is um, the state has a certain deadline to provide it. It sounds like they missed it, maybe because um, one lawyer thought I'd handed it off to the other. Um, and so as an entity, the DA's office thought we've got this covered. Discovery must have gone out to Mr. Mondelli. I'm glad to hear that you are familiar with the allegations. Um, I'm hopeful that discovery isn't voluminous, but it sounds like also there wouldn't be anything surprising in it for you when you get it. Um, but uh, for future reference, if you end up with a case in my courtroom, um, silence means you don't have an issue with discovery um, if we get to final plea um, and there isn't a discovery deficiency notice filed. But um, this one hit a little bit of an administrative bump um, with a handoff. Ms. Nix, have you found the form yet? Yes, sir. And they are uh, parents of the same child. And I see that uh, discovery was served back in January to Ms. Feely. Um, it's <laughs> okay. likely that we didn't get notice that a new attorney had been assigned. And so. Oh, and you got on recently, Mr. Mondelli, I think. That's that is correct, Judge. I was I, I was after after arraignment. So I was working through this matter uh, from the back end. Got it. Okay. That explains why you're, you are where you are procedurally. And, and I feel better about that. Um, and, and the state in fact did provide a bunch of discovery to Mr. Mabry's lawyer at that time. He's pivoted, brought in private counsel, which he's free to do. Um, and we need to marry you up with the discovery and the lawyer who's going to keep it. Um, I would ask Ms. Nix and Ms. Willingham by the end of today. Um, to shoot an email to me, Ms. Nelson, and Mr. Mondelli saying, here's who's handling the case. Um, and I, I can answer that now, Judge. I'm, I'm actually, as you've been talking, I've actually been looking at the case. So um, I just, once I get in touch with the victim um, and review the facts a little bit more, I should be able to get an offer to defense, hopefully, if not by I, I shouldn't I'm not going to say the end of this week because it's already Thursday um, no. probably by the by the end of next week I should be able to have an offer to him okay we've got plenty of time what I would like to do is keep this case on the May 30th trial calendar but what I'll do is preserve Mr. Mabry's um, final plea rights because we weren't able to have that conversation today what was supposed to happen today Mr. Mabry is if you hadn't switched lawyers and discovery had gone to the right place and the state hadn't switched lawyers is that you and your lawyer would have talked about whatever the state is offering or making up five years to serve. And Mr. Mondelli would have been in a position to say, that is a great offer. You should take it. Or that's ridiculous. We should go to trial. Ultimately, of course, it's your decision. But you and Mr. Mondelli haven't been able to do that because the state, they were actually trying to talk to a different lawyer. Right. Um, and actually, the lawyer who ultimately has the case on the state side didn't know she had it. So none of that is your fault. None of that's being held against you. And we're actually not going to slow anything down because I know you're in jail. And the part of me that gets a little frustrated is, well, wait a minute, this guy's waiting in jail. And we had these who's on first situations, um, which aren't your fault. But um, we will keep your case right where it was going to be, which is the May 30th trial calendar. Mr. Mondelli, if you and Ms. Willingham um, reach a resolution, even if it's non-negotiated, you're separated by a little bit, but it's close enough that you're comfortable to advise Mr. Mabry he should go forward with a plea. Um, please don't wait till the 30th. 
Um, if you've sorted something out, let's get everyone in here or have you uh, virtually, but we need Mr. Mabry here. Um, and, and let's take that plea. So you and Ms. Willingham can reach out to Ms. Nelson if something does develop. Otherwise, the fallback will be on May 30th. Mr. Mabry will be brought over. I'll call the trial calendar, but Mr. Mabry will still have his final plea rights. Does that work for you, Mr. Mondelli? Absolutely. All right. And Ms. Willingham, that should give you enough time. You don't have to rush to get that offer out tomorrow. Yes, Judge. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Mondelli, I may have spoken over you. You were lagging a little bit. In fact, you froze. Ms. Feely? I forwarded the discovery to the um, email address in the state bar website, Mr. Mondelli. Great. Mr. Mondelli, are you? I can just see my connection is getting weak. Uh, um, just well, as long as you can hear us, um, it continues to be a weak connection. Um, but your predecessor on the case. Yep, we can hear you now. Why don't you turn your video off? Maybe just audio. Yes. I confirmed, I just got the email. Great, fantastic. You're off and running, um, and we will see you before May 30th if you and Mr. Mabry reach an agreement with the state. Otherwise, we'll see everyone on the 30th. Mr. Mabry, do you have any questions about anything we discussed? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Mondelli will have the discovery soon, and he will undoubtedly come see you and share that with you. Okay? okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, Judge. You bet. You're free to go. Um, next up, no, is if is um, Ms. Madden on or here? Yes, Judge. Good morning. Leah Madden on behalf of Mr. Dabney. He should be in the courtroom in person. Great. Mr. Dabney, if you come on up to the podium, please. You're all blurry, Ms. Madden. Yes, I think it's some type of filter. It was supposed to just blur the background, but I'm trying <laughs> to get it off because it seems to all be right. <laughs> blurs the foreground instead. <laughs> all right, well, we can hear you and you can see your lawyer on the monitor there? Yes, sir. Great, all right, well, let's go on the record with position six. It's 23 SC 190872. State versus Chad Dabney. Mr. Dabney is here in court, as is the prosecutor, Ms. Nix. Mr. Dabney's attorney, Ms. Madden, is appearing virtually through this sort of soft focus, foggy lens um, from Frozen or something. But she's here. Um, she can hear and see and knows what's going on. Um, Ms. Madden, have you received, um, as far as you can tell, all the discovery in the case? Yes, Judge, I have. And I've also received an offer from the state, which I have communicated to my client. He is not accepting the offer at this time. So we're requesting for the case to be placed on the trial calendar. Um, however, Judge, I have surgery scheduled for May the 28th. I just got my surgery date on Monday. It's non-elective and I anticipate being out four weeks. I may have filed a medical leave. I'm not sure yet. My assistant is literally working on them this week. So I just want to make the court aware of that I will not be available for the May 30th trial calendar. Got it. Well, best of luck with that. Um, a question. Did you say you will be out for four weeks as in one, two, three, four, or you will be out four weeks as in an indeterminate amount of time? No, four weeks, one, two, three, four, the number four. Okay. All right. So by July, you should be back in action yes. in theory. Okay. All right. Well, let's get on the record what the state's offer is. Ms. Nix, what is the offer that you communicated? Uh, yes, sir. The state's offer was a total of, of 30 years served 10 um, to count one, uh, which would be 15 years served 10, and then count five, which would be 15 years probated consecutive. Um, and the state would null process two, three, and four. Okay. And count one has a mandatory minimum of 10 years to serve? Yes, sir. Driven by the quantity of drugs that was seized? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Dabney, do you understand what the state's offer is, this 30 years to serve 10 with the balance on probation? 
Yes, sir. Okay. And it sounds like you've had a chance to talk about that offer with Ms. Madden? Yes, sir. All right. And that's not something you're interested in right now? No, sir. Okay. You understand that while 30 is a big number, 10 is a big number too, but that 10 years to serve, um, that's what the law requires. So the state, there might be ways they could go below 10, but um, that's sort of the floor for uh, drug trafficking charge is 10 years to serve. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Um, so your preference would be to have this case go to trial um, or get a better offer, but not this offer. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand that um, the state may continue to make this offer, but it could get worse in the future, meaning worse for you. It could be that they say 15 years to serve or, or 20. You don't control that. Yes, sir. I okay. Guess. And the other thing that changes from today is that today, if you entered a plea and I sentence you to more than what Ms. Madden asked for, although she can't ask for less than 10, <laughs> if you're having to plead to the trafficking count. But if I sentenced you to more than what Ms. Madden asked for, you could withdraw your plea. You could say, no, thank you. After today, that's what changes is that you don't get to, if you decide to plead, you don't get to withdraw your plea if my sentence is more severe than what you ask for. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, then I find you are um, intelligently and voluntarily rejecting the state's offer, which is your right. And we will move your case to a trial calendar. I don't have a date for you yet. Um, we're going to need to skip the May trial calendar because your lawyer is going to be out of pocket. Um, but we've got one every month and there'll be one in July. And this case will be on. Uh, oh, I was sent a date. Um, I'll be able to tell you that date. Um, it's July 2 is the day we call the calendar. Um, July 4th is a holiday, so it won't actually start that day. July 2 is when we call the calendar, so you'd need to be here. And then trial would be um, after the 4th of July holiday, okay? That's so right. as you're planning your life, know that that week after the 4th of July, um, if you haven't resolved your case, you may need to be in here with the jury dealing with this, okay? Yes, sir. All right, did you get something in the mail telling you to be here today? Yes, sir. Great. Ms. Madden, anything else you want us to cover? No, Your Honor, I think that's it. All right. Well, again, good luck with everything at the end of May. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good seeing you. Same. Take care. Work on that filter. You will do. All right. Bye bye. Um, and you're good to go. Carlton Phillips is next. Okay. Okay. See how he's doing. Okay. We'll figure that out. We'll we'll hold on him. That gets us then to Mr. Brown's case. Is Mr. Stewart here yet? Is he up? Yes. Okay. Mr. Brown, I had already consulted with Ms. Gordon, who didn't see an issue having her client and your client out together to go through the final plea colloquy. Are you all right with that? Or do you think they should be handled individually? Uh, I have no problem with them being handled together, but at some point I would like, if, I can, if we can approach the bench or go to the corridor, I guess I'm not, just like to discuss regarding this situation. Do you want to do that before we do the final plea? I'm, I'm fine doing that, but I asked Ms. unless Ms. Gordon shouldn't be there, um, if it's unique to your case, I'd just soon have it be the four of us. That'd be fine. Well, okay. Yes, that, that's fine. Okay, well, why don't we do that so I'm in the know before um, we bring them out. But next out will be Ware and Stuart. I don't know if you want to roll that table over where how we'll fit. Um, Deputy Gordon can talk to you about that, but we'll have four folks. Okay. Okay. Thank 
Your microphone is on, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank 
Mr. Brown, if you'd come sit over, you know your usual spot? Yes, you are. Yeah, so if um, we could have Mr. Stewart sit at the rolling table and Mr. Ware sit next to Ms. Gordon, please. Got everyone. Great. All right. Um, Ms. Rivers, you ready? Yes, Judge, I'm ready. Okay, let's go on the record with um, 23 SC 190987. It's State versus Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Mr. Stewart. And Mr. Ware. Hello, Mr. Ware. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, you are here for what was going to be a discussion about final plea to see if this case was maybe going to work out in advance of trial. Um, but Mr. Stewart, your lawyer, Mr. Brown, um, brought something up with me that he wants to take care of before um, you and he have a conversation about, is this something that should be a trial or is this something that maybe can be um, negotiated with the state? Um, and Mr. Ware, um, your lawyer is Gordon. Um, number one is looking for a little piece of discovery that um, she hasn't been able to locate yet. But number two, more importantly, um, she has asked for um, a little more time to, in fact, any time at all, to talk with you about what the state's offer is, um, because that's something that she learned only recently and so hasn't had a chance to talk to you. Um, what I'd like to do is have Mr. Abate get on the record what the state's offer is um, for the two defendants, if it's the same for both or what it is. The time the offer for both is life, Your Honor. Okay, as in plead to the indictment? Correct. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Ware and um, Mr. Stewart, if you were going to resolve your case today, and that's not happening, um, the state would um, recommend the minimum, um, because that's what the minimum sentence is for murder or felony murder, is life. Um, I'm going to um, reset this so that Mr. Brown can do the work that um, he wants to get done on your behalf, Mr. Stewart. And uh, Mr. Ware, Ms. Gordon obviously needs some time to talk to you about that offer, to get that little piece of discovery. Um, and we're going to bring you both back so we can have the conversation then that I thought we'd be able to have now. Ms. Gordon, anything you want to get on the record about this? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, Judge, I do just want to state on the record that 
that offer was conveyed to me about three minutes ago in the hallway behind the courtroom. Um, and we had not received an offer prior to today. Um, I think that's all. Okay. Mr. Brown, anything you want to get on the record? No, all right. I, uh, I made an offer of life at the, the first court hearing we had. She asked or Ms. Gordon asked me what my offer was. I said it was life and she kind of laughed and, and we both said, well, we'll we will work to try to work it out. Okay. So and nothing has changed since then. Correct. So okay. I'm, I'm open to a counter offer at any point, like the standard procedure typically is, as we work through these cases. Okay. Um, I appreciate both perspectives on this. The reality is because of what Mr. Brown um, is going to do, we're going to tap the brakes anyway. Um, and Ms. Gordon, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand um, through an email to, to me and Ms. Nelson and um, to Mr. Abate. If um, things are going at a rate that is beginning to get you concerned, uh, Mr. Ware's case needs to move forward. I think it makes sense to keep them together. Um, but if it's taking too long to address Mr. Brown's concerns, then I'm going to need to pull the two cases apart because that's not Mr. Ware's issue. Um, but uh, hopefully that can go pretty quickly um, on Mr. Stewart's side and we can keep the two defendants cases moving together. All right. Yes, Judge. If there is nothing else, um, Mr. Brown, my request to you is whether you consult with co -count, your, your um, fellow defense counsel or what, that you get something to me in the next few days, not weeks, but days, um, that will get that process moving. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ware, do you have any questions for me? No, I'll talk my head. Okay, that's okay. Mr. Stewart, any questions? All right. Thank you for being here. Uh, yes, because the other case that I thought was yours was Mr. Jordan. So, yes, thank you. Hmm? Ms. Singleton, did you, I forgot to ask you if you had anything to add. You're just here because you're always here. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Can I get your card? I don't have a card. I can give you my number. Yes, please. I want to make sure you get a copy of it. Yes, ma'am. An amendment to the announcement on Miss Pittman's case? Sure, let's go back to wherever that was. Position 11. Yes. This is no longer a plea, it will be adult diversion. Oh, okay. Is she on the call? She should still be on. All right, page. let me get her on one second. I just need to finish my notes from what we did. Excuse yes, ma'am. Miss Pittman, are you still on? Yes. All right, there you are. Um, and we've got um, Ms. Willingham, there she is, and Ms. Wood. All right, so um, Ms. Willingham, Ms. Wood said that the offer is adult diversion, but yes, Judge. that usually is, oh, I don't know that that can happen. She has to be yes. accepted. Judge, yes, that's where we are. And Ms. Wood and I actually had talked about this, um, I think last week or the week before, I did submit the application um, last week in anticipation for this. Man. I have not received any um, answer no, back, but I did send thing. another follow-up email. So as soon as I get that, I will um, reach out to Ms. Wood. And if it is an acceptance, then we'll just get the order over to Ms. Nelson. Okay. Um, I know you don't make those decisions, but is there anything about this application that made you worry that it might not go through? No. Um, the only thing I initially was concerned about was the possession of a um, weapon. But when I looked at it, that weapon is a knife. And typically that is not something that would bar her 
Um, and in the event she's not accepted into the irregular adult diversion, there is another alternative that I will present to Ms. Wood, and it, it's a quickly, it's a fairly quick process if she's not accepted into the regular diversion. Okay. So what we'll do then, Ms. Pittman, is I'm going to keep your case going towards that trial calendar at the end of May, but it sounds like in just a few days, I'll be signing an order that moves your case over to what we call judicial hold, which puts it on freeze. Um, you're going to be required to do a few things as part of this diversion program. And as long as you take care of your obligations, then the state will dismiss the charges. Um, is that what you understand it to be? Yes. Okay. Well, that's the plan. Um, and Ms. Willingham, you'll keep Ms. Wood and me posted. Yes, Judge. Okay. Ms. Wood, anything else on behalf of Ms. Pittman? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you for staying in there, Ms. Pittman. You're free to go. All right. Thank you. Yep. Reginald Yearby? Mr. Yearby is here, Your Honor. I have a new offer. I'd like to speak with him about. All right. Mr. Yearby, uh, Ms. Feely is going to talk to you about um, a new offer um, in your case. So um, sit tight and she will meet with you in a moment. You bet. Um, seats. Do we have an update on Mr. Seats? He responded right away. I think he was going to attempt to get on the Zoom, but I do expect him here. He was going to appear in person? We were still kind of on the fence about that. He is going to appear in some form. One way or the other. Okay, we'll hold a little bit more. Um, Emmanuel Tazera. Right there. That one was is set for a motion hearing on the 18th. 18th? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we had discussed via email of pushing the final plea back so that we could... Um, take care of that motion prior to. Is this the case where the motion came in a little late and it's um, like his bag was searched in the hospital? Yes. So we need to work through that first. Okay. So this may need to, after a ruling on that, everyone will have a better sense of how this might work out. Hello, I'm here. Yeah. Who are you? Mr. Seeks. I, was, I had a problem with the, the mute. I meant with the, the Zoom. I'm sorry. All right. Sir. All right. Well, why don't you mute yourself? And when we are ready for you, we were ready for you a while ago and you managed not to make it down here. So why don't you mute and we'll circle back. Okay. All right. Um, so the date for Mr. Tazera's hearing is the 18th. Yes, sir. Okay. And you've got good contact information for him. I do. All right. So we will see you on the 18th for a suppression hearing about the police activity that got them, um, their hands on what was seized from you. Um, and we'll figure out what to do with final plea after that. Okay. Uh, Richard Shanks. Mr. Shanks is here, Yara. This was also um, an adult diversion. He's not able to um, speak. He can, he can stay right there. Um, so I'm still speaking with the state about what the requirements would be for a diversion but because of his limitations. Okay. He, he actually got accepted. I sent that over to Ms. Seeley a while ago. Um, so she, if there are any concerns as to what that would be, she would need to communicate it to me so I can communicate it to adult diversion. Okay. Did you know he was accepted? Send her those terms again. Okay. I think I knew he was accepted. I didn't see the terms, but we'll, we'll discuss it. I think that's something we can handle today. Well, good. Let's do that today since he made it all the way down here, if it's a little refinement. Um, so do you need Ms. Willingham to send that again, or you think you can find it? Oh, look. So we're actively emailing. So. Okay. All right. You guys stay emailing, and um, we'll figure that one out. Okay. 
Um, so that's Mr. Shanks. Um, and then we've got Jacoby Favors. And I think this is the one I bumped into. It got reindicted to two misdemeanors. I've never seen a misdemeanor only indictment. Yes, Judge. And we're resolving it through that? Yes, Judge. Okay. Yes, All right. Um, and that's a plea to the 24 SC case. Yes, Judge. And I, um, I'm not sure. I was hoping I could get just a copy of that to go over with Mr. Faber. I'll print it out in a second. Um, so let me then go back through the calendar. Um, Cozart, you need to talk to him some more. Okay. Um, did Marcus Jackson, any update on that, Ms. Feely? He responded that he, well, his uh, significant other responded that he was at work, but she was trying to get him on the Zoom as well. Okay. Um, Carlton Phillips, I'm not remember. Oh, you need to see how he's doing. Okay. Um, Mr. Yearby has a new offer. You'll talk to him about that. Um, Mr. Seats we'll hear from in just a moment. Uh, have you spoken with Mr. Seats? What, what was going to happen? I have not spoken with him about the state's offer. Okay. So maybe you two should speak. Maybe we should take a little break and you two can speak. Um, uh, Mr. Shanks, we probably worked out. We need to fine tune the, and then favors. You need a copy of, so let me print out Mr. Favors is, new indictment. And then I'm going to take a break. And then when we're ready on any one of these, let me know. We'll come out and do it. Thank you, Jeff. Sure. All right, Ms. Wood, if you want to grab this, I will mute the general microphone and people can be at ease until someone says they're ready for more. Mm.
All right, um, Ms. Rivers, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Great, sorry, someone was doing something remotely on, on my computer. Thank you, IT, for doing that. Let's bring Mr. Cozart out, please, up to the podium. You're returning that. All right, Mr. Kozar, this way, not that way. Um, you've got three cases on this final plea calendar. I won't read all the indictment numbers, but it's positions one through three. Um, two of them involve you allegedly driving recklessly, and one is a family violence battery or a family violence situation. Ms. Wood represents you in all three cases. She is here, you are here. There are two different prosecutors involved with your cases. There's a prosecutor who's handling the family violence situation, and then a different one who's got your two reckless driving cases. Um, Ms. Nix, are you in a position to put on the record what the state's global offer is, or do we need to loop Ms. Willingham in? I believe I can put her offer on the I mean, She's here, but if you can just do the speaking, that would, that, I think, make it smoother. What is, if Mr. Kozar wanted to resolve all three cases today, what would the state be recommending? In case number 23 SC 186104, the state's recommendation is a total of 20 years, um, served 10 with the balance probated as a condition, um, or in a plea to that case, um, the offer today, which is expiring today, is that the state will not process 23 SC 189483, um, and the sentence in 23 SC 186. 104 would run concurrently with um, case number. Twenty three SC one eight seven nine seven eight. The offer on that one is uh, five years probation with special conditions. OK, so overall, if Mr. Kozart said, let's work all these things out, the state would be recommended 10 years to serve followed by 10 years on probation? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Mr. Kozar, that's the, those are the two main numbers you need to understand. Like I said, you've got three cases, two of them involving alleged reckless driving and then a family violence situation. You understand that if you entered a plea in those three cases today, Ms. Nix, and, and there's one other prosecutor, but collectively the state would recommend 10 years in custody followed by 10 years on probation. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you understand that today you can withdraw your plea if you do enter a plea, if the sentence that I give you is more than what Ms. Wood asked for? So I'm going to make up a number. She might say, it's not 10 years to serve, five years for Mr. Cozart. And I'd listen to her and say, oh, okay, I see why you're arguing that. If I sentenced you to more than what she asked for today, you could back out and say, mm, I was willing to go with five or whatever the number is. But Judge, you gave me more, um, and I'd rather go to trial over that. And so today you could do that. You can, I call it backing out. I don't mean that in a negative way, but oh, now I know what you're going to give me. I'd rather get in front of a jury. After today, you could still enter a plea. You're just not able to back out if you don't like the sentence I give you. Do you understand what changes from today? I get it. Great. You get it. Um, Ms. Wood, is Mr. Cozart interested in um, going forward with the state's recommendation of 10 years in prison, followed by... 10 years on probation. No, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Kozar, your cases are going on to the May 30th trial calendar. So, not all that far away. You'll be back in here. On that day, the 30th, what we're doing is just calling the calendar, figuring out who's first in line, who's going to go. Your cases are older, um, and so you might be closer to the top of the list. Um, and then that week after, because the 30th, I think is a Thursday, that week after we would start the trial of one of your cases. Do you know yet, Ms. Nix? That's a ways away, but do you know which case you'd go forward with? Judge, um, 
in all candor, um, the state actually needs to reindict these two cases. There are some um, language issues in it. Um, I'll get that done by next week. Okay. Um, hopefully that won't delay us. Um, I would probably go forward on um, 23 SC 189483 first, um, as that one um, just has law enforcement witnesses. Um, okay. The other case has two child witnesses or child victims. Um, and so um, I think it would be better to go forward on the one with just law enforcement witnesses first. Okay. Well, that'll be your call. Um, the reindictments are more technical in nature. You're not adding, a, oh, someone died. We're adding vehicular homicide. It would be charging language as opposed to bringing in, oh, we discovered there were drugs in the car or a gun or something. Yes, sir. It's just, it's just a language issue that we need to fix before putting it in front of a jury. Okay. Ms. Wood, I don't think that kind of technical fix would necessitate a delay. Not my call, though, yours. And so assuming the state moves quickly in re-indicting, um, obviously we need to arraign um, Mr. Cozart or he could waive arraignment, but he'd need to be given that opportunity after you looked over the indictment. It sounds like it will be more of a cosmetic change than, um, nope, now it's not DUI, um, alcohol is DUI drugs or something. Um, more substantive. But let's see what comes out. Obviously, the sooner you can do that, Ms. Nix, the better um, so that we can get Mr. Cozart back into court. Okay. Um, I forgot to ask about discovery. You feel like you're doing all right with discovery? I believe we have everything, Judge. Okay. Mr. Cozart, do you have any questions about what we've been discussing? Um, yes. Um, would I be able to um, get my bond restated? Reinstated? Um, so you can talk to Ms. Wood about that. She could always file a motion saying, um, we'd like you to consider judge giving Mr. Cozart a bond. Um, I wouldn't get your hopes up based on what I've come to learn about your situations just in considering bond before, but I just want to manage your expectations. That's not me saying no. I need to um, hear Ms. Wood out and then Ms. Nix would have a chance to say, here's why Mr. Cozart shouldn't get a bond. But I'll tell you right now, my thinking is your trial date is so close in time. Um, why would I risk giving you a bond and you're driving again? Because I don't want you driving until we figure out what really happened in this case. Right, right. I want to be clear. I'm not prejudging anything. They may have the wrong guy, wrong car. You weren't driving or you were driving fine and we have bad cops. You know, the jury is going to hear all that. But I need to be mindful of that it's not once but twice um, that you got at least wrapped up in a situation where there were concerns about um, your safety on the road. So um, you and Ms. Wood will talk about that. She'll give you her sense of let's not waste our time doing it. Or yeah, you know what, McBurney will listen. Let's see um, if uh, he'll suddenly set a bond now. Um, but for now, you're where you're going to be. And um, I just want to make sure the state gets um, its paperwork in order so that doesn't delay you. That'll be a reason for Ms. Wood to say, now, wait a minute, Judge, if the state says, oh, we did this, we're not ready or this paperwork, that's not on you. And that's when I start thinking we, we shouldn't make this guy sit in jail because the state can't figure out which way the paper should go. That hasn't happened yet, um, but we'll see what happens. OK. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Feely is here. How about Mr. Jackson? Um, Mr. Jackson's um, human resources for he's not allowed to have a phone at his job because it's reaching out to him to hopefully get him on Zoom if he's not already. Okay. All right. No, I just have iPad 2, which is our friend, um, Mr. Sheets. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to talk to Carlton Phillips? I have not, but I okay. have spoken with his family, who he was never able to provide me with contact information with him. So I did take some time this morning to get some information that's been very helpful about his situation that he was never able to really communicate to me. Okay. Um, so I think it is unfortunately going to go the competency route. Okay. Um, I will speak with him, of course, before he comes out, if it's okay. Please do. Um, Mr. Yearby. Mr. Yearby will be a plea this morning. All right. Um, but we've got Ms. Wood at the podium, so she's going first. Um, and it's um, Mr. Jordan. So does that mean we're doing Mr. Favors? Yes, sir. Come on up, Mr. Favors. Mr. 
Mr. Jordan, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's get on the record. This is position 16 from our final plea calendar, 23 SC191892, also known as 24 SC001352. It's my understanding, Mr. Jordan, that the state is going forward with a 24 SC case. I'm assuming this plea goes through and um, Mr. Favors goes through with it, then you will be um, dismissing or null processing the 23 SC case. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay, well, one step at a time. We'll start with the 24 SC. Um, Mr. Favors, in a moment, um, Mr. Jordan is gonna put you under oath. Once you're under oath, he's gonna ask you a bunch of questions. They're questions you already know the answers to because you've been talking about this stuff with Ms. Wood. But if at any point during the conversation we're having, you are confused by something or you're just not following it, will you let me know? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And make sure when you answer, you speak up. You've got a yes, so far a soft voice. All right, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Favors, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before the court in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. You may place your hand down. Can you please state your true, correct, and legal name for the court, please? Jacoby Wontez Favors Jr. Thank you. And would you mind uh, spelling your name, please? K-A-C-O-B-E-Y. And also your middle name? O-N-T-E-Z. Thank you. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medicine? No, sir. Is there any medication that you normally take that you have not been given today? No, sir. How old are you and how far have you gone in school? 23. I'm a high school graduate, class of 21. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand that on this accusation, you have been charged with two counts of reckless conduct? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? And if you pled not guilty or remain silent, you would receive a jury trial? Yes, sir. Uh, have you had enough time to speak with your attorney, Ms. Lacey Wood, about all of the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charges in this accusation, including any potential defenses? Yes, sir. Do you need any more time to discuss this case with your attorney? No, sir. Are you satisfied with her services? Yes, sir. And Ms. Wood, are you satisfied that your client has a full understanding of this proceeding? Yes. And Ms. Wood, do you also waive formal reading of this accusation? We do. And do you also waive any and all defects in the accusation, including any with respect to your client's name? So waived. Uh, Mr. Favors, do you originally recall having been arrested on the charges of child molestation? Yes, sir. Your Honor, the state is unaware of any outstanding warrants that are related to those charges. Uh, Ms. Wood, do you know of any outstanding warrants that are related to those charges? We do not. Mr. Favors, do you understand that you are entering a guilty plea to two counts of reckless conduct? Yes, sir. And do you understand that the minimum for those offenses is one day in custody and the maximum is 12 months in custody? Yes, sir. And did your attorney previously advise you the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge that you were pleading to? Yes, sir. And your honor, uh, this is a negotiated plea, which we're asking your honor to accept. Uh, which the recommendation is as follows. Your Honor, as to both counts, the recommendation is 12 months probation uh, for count one to run, uh, I'm sorry, for count two to run consecutive to count one. Uh, the special conditions of probation being that uh, Mr. Favors have no contact with the victim children listed in this accusation, uh, that he undergo a psychosexual evaluation and follow recommended treatment. Uh, and I believe those were the only special conditions. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Favors, was that the negotiated recommendation that was communicated to you? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand that the court does not have to accept that recommendation? Yes, sir. Do you understand that the court can sentence you to the maximum on these charges? Yes, sir. Mr. Favors, do you understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit or any special conditions of probation without being subject to revocation for the balance of the sentence? Yes, sir. Do you understand that this is a guilty plea which is permanently recorded on your criminal history? Yes, sir. 
Uh, are you currently on probation or parole? No, sir. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, sir. And uh, Ms. Wood, is uh, Mr. Favors intending to use his uh, first offender on this plea? No, he is not. Okay. And Mr. Favors, do you understand that you waive any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses, by entering a plea of guilty today? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you went to trial, you would have the right to a trial by jury? Yes, sir. The right to see, hear, and confront witnesses called to testify against you? Yes, sir. And the right to testify or to remain silent and not incriminate yourself? Yes, sir. And Mr. Favors, I'm now going to list off uh, the rights that you are giving up by pleading guilty. If you can wait to the end of the list to tell me if you understand that you're giving up those rights. Uh, do you understand that by pleading, pleading guilty, you were giving up the following rights, the right to a trial by jury, the right to remain silent and not incriminate yourself, the right to confront witnesses called to testify against you, the right to the assistance of counsel hired by you, or to court-appointed counsel if you could not afford an attorney at a trial of your case, the right to the presumption of innocence, the right to testify on your own behalf and to present other evidence, the right to subpoena witnesses and compel the production of evidence, the right to have the charges against you proved beyond a reasonable doubt, and finally, the right to appeal if convicted of these charges after a trial. Yes, sir, I understand. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, oh, sir. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Uh, Mr. Favors, how do you plead to two counts of reckless conduct in accusation number 24SC001352? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with the full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes, sir. Do you understand <clears throat> that you have 30 days in which to appeal your conviction based on your plea today? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you have only 12 months from today for these misdemeanor charges that you're entering a plea to, to file a habeas corpus petition challenging the voluntariness of this guilty plea? Yes, sir. And your honor, uh, for a factual basis in regards to this case, on February 3rd of 2023, uh, an officer from the Atlanta Police Department actually responded to 2980 Jonesboro Road, uh, which is in Atlanta, Georgia, zip code 30354. Uh, when the police initially responded, they responded to a fight call. Uh, a concerned neighbor actually called uh, when she heard fighting outside of the apartment. Uh, when the officers did arrive, they spoke with a, they actually viewed uh, Miss Lopez uh, chasing the defendant, uh, actually hitting him and screaming at him. Uh, I will censor this, but calling him a uh, nasty MF. Um, the Mr. Favors was then detained and placed in the rear of the uh, vehicle of the responding officer. The officer spoke to Miss Lopez, whom stated that she saw uh, Mr. Favors uh, masturbating over a 10 year old. Uh, Ms. Webb, uh, and also Mr. Octavius Clay uh, Jr. that was in the room as well. Uh, Octavius is spelled O-C-T-A-V-I-U-S. Uh, Clay has normal spelling. Uh, Ms. Lopez essentially said as she was coming downstairs to check on her phone, uh, she witnessed what she assumed to be uh, Mr. Favors masturbating. Uh, she said this happened maybe two or three times. She confronted him on the second time about him masturbating, and he told her to uh, mind her own business. The third time in which she came down the stairs, according to the statement that she gave to police, is when she saw Mr. Favors uh, masturbating over uh, Ms. Webb. Um, the relation here, Your Honor, is that uh, Mr. Favors, uh, I guess these would be his cousins, and Ms. Wood can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ms. Webb, the uh, adult that we spoke with, 
uh, is actually the mother of these two victims. Ms. Lopez? Uh, no, Ms. Uh, Ms. Webb. Ms. Oh, Ms. who's Ms. Lopez? Ms. Lopez was actually dating uh, one of the uh, children of Ms. Webb at that time, and they were all staying at the house. So Ms. Webb, adult Ms. Webb, has at least three children. Yes. The two juveniles who are the um, victims here, and then presumably someone older someone. that Ms. Lopez was dating. Yes. Right. Okay. And they were all staying at the house. I believe Mr. Favors had also was also living at that particular location at that time. But not a son of, not a child of Ms. Webb. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Cut. Okay, got it. Because you said he's cousins of Mr. Clay and Webb, the little girl Webb. Yes. Okay. Uh, the officers did uh, speak with Mr. Favors uh, at the police station. Uh, he did uh, voluntarily waive his Miranda rights. Uh, he did admit to uh, masturbating in the presence of the two children, uh, but denied masturbating over the children. Uh, he actually used the words that he admitted to being horny and high, uh, and that's when he started masturbating. But he said that Ms. Lopez was not telling the truth about him. Uh, because Ms. Lopez was upset with him because he would not smoke uh, marijuana with her. Uh, Your Honor, in investigation of this case, um, the state had a difficult time contacting Ms. Lopez in regards to this case. Um, and we also spoke with Ms. Webb. Ms. Webb said that she had never had any problems before uh, with Mr. Favors in regards to her children, that she had no concerns with him. Um, being near her children. Uh, she actually told me that after this particular incident that Ms. Lopez, um, I believe the term she used was fell off the face of the earth and stopped dating her son. Um, she also stated to me that she believes that Ms. Lopez provided false information uh, to the uh, officers in regards to her name and her contact information. Um, your Honor, the reason why, in particular, why we are asking for the psychosexual evaluation is during the uh, interview process between uh, Mr. Favors and the officers, he did briefly mention another incident in which a family member had accused, a child family member had accused him of inappropriate contact. Uh, so we do believe given, uh, and we weren't given any specific names in regards to that incident, uh, we do believe that based on this allegation and also the previous mention of a child uh, making an accusation against him, we believe that the psychosexual evaluation is appropriate in this case. Uh, but given the what the state currently has, uh, also that Ms. Lopez would be the only witness that the state could uh, present, both of the children did stay on body-worn camera that they were sleeping at the time of the incident. They were actually, everyone else in the house was actually woken up by the fight in which Ms. Lopez was chasing and, and attempting to hit his favors. Uh, so we would ask that your honor accept this uh, negotiated plea. All right. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, Ms. Roberts, good morning. Good morning. Do you have any criminal history information for Mr. Favors? Yes, he has two cycles, but he does not have any felony or misdemeanor convictions. All right. Thank you. Ms. Wood. Thank you, Judge. I do want to start out by pointing out that I believe Ms. Webb is actually here present in support of Mr. Favors. This would be the mother of the two children who are listed as the victims here. Yes, Judge. Okay. So I want to make that noted for the record. Um, actually, several of the family members are super supportive of Mr. Favors um, and are not exactly happy about this resolution as they feel he shouldn't have to enter a plea of any sort. However, uh, my advice is that this is an excellent outcome um, instead of putting this before a, a jury. Sure. Judge. Having 12 people who don't know Mr. Favors hear about the allegations yes, um, would just be awkward, period, regardless of what the, the verdict is. But going forward on child molestation allegations and 
unfavorable verdict for Mr. Favors is very, very different from this. Yes, Judge. Okay. Um, Mr. Favors did spend some time in custody, so I do want to put those dates on the record so that he gets credit. It's February 3rd, 2023 to May the 19th of 2023 for 106 days. Okay. Judge, he is a high school graduate. Um, he's currently working as a patient care assistant. Um I am going to ask, I know, I understand the reason for the special condition of the no contact provision. I just, I, I want to word it in a certain way so that you, I don't want him to inadvertently violate probation mm -hmm. from being at a family gathering. Um, I would ask the court to consider waiving probation fees for the first couple of months. And also um, he wanted me to ask if the court will consider suspending probation after a period of good compliance judge. Okay. Got it. Mr. Favors, anything you want to add? No, sir. Okay. Well, Mr. Favors, I find there's a factual basis to a plea to um, reckless conduct. That's what you're pleading to now, misdemeanor. Um, I also find that your plea is knowing and voluntary. Knowing means you've understood the things we talked about. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Any questions about anything? No, sir. Okay. Voluntary means no one's forcing you to enter this plea. I know you're not excited about it. Your, your supporters may not be excited about it, but you've decided after talking with Ms. Wood that this is the smartest way forward for you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Then I'll accept your plea. Um, Ms. Wood, um, can someone in my office sign the accusation on your behalf? Yes, Judge. Mr. Jordan? Yes, Your Honor. Um, is it all right if we electronically put your name, Mr. Favors, on um, this new accusation with a reckless conduct on it? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll do that. Um, what I'm going to do, Mr. Favors, as to count one, is to sentence you to 12 months to serve three months with a balance on probation. But you're going to get credit. You did a little more than three months in custody. Okay. So that shrinks your probation a little bit. Thank you. Count two will be 12 months probation. It will run consecutive to count one. So it's actually a total of 21 months probation, not 24, because you already did three months in custody. Um, what I'm, I, I think a um, better way to structure the condition would be no unsupervised contact with, um, I'll make sure I get the names right, with I'm going to spell, how did you pronounce Ms. Webb's first name? I did not. Yeah. You didn't. It's spelled K-E-Z-I-A-U-H. How would you say it? Kizai. Kizai. All right. Well, um, Kizai Webb um, and Octavius Clay. We had that spelled already. Um, you can't be in the same room with them unless there's another adult there. All right. Okay. All right. So if they're in a room and that's it, they're doing... Mm -hmm. PlayStation or something, you can't be in that room. All right. But if Ms. Webb, the adult, is there or Uncle So and So, huh. then you can be in the same room with them. All right. um, and I am going to have you submit two evaluations. One is a psychosexual evaluation, and the other is a drug evaluation. And if either expert right. recommends any treatment, counseling, or anything like that, right. um, then that treatment will be part of your probation. All right. I will waive the first two months of your probation supervision fees while you get situated. Right. Um, and we will take it from there. Um, you will get information about contacting misdemeanor probation through Ms. Wood. Okay. She's going to give you either a phone number or an address, but you'll want to connect with them. You'll need to connect with them right away because if they don't hear from you, then they just send me a warrant saying, we don't know where this favors guy is. Yes, I'll sign the warrant, you get picked up and that'll be a setback for you. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Jordan, anything else in Mr. Favors' case? Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. Given this disposition, is the state moving to null pros 23 SC 191-892? Yes, Your Honor, and the state can provide any paperwork that is uh, that the court uh, wishes. Um, as long as you have no objection, we'll just stamp it um, that there was a motion from the state and it'll get signed and that'll take care of that. No objection from the state. Your Honor. All right. Ms. Wood, anything else on behalf of Mr. Favors? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yes, um, ma'am, if you want to, um, I guess what we'll do, Mr. Favors, why don't you take a seat at that table there? Um, and Ms. Webb, you're welcome to come up. Um, I didn't mean to exclude you. I don't know that Ms. Wood necessarily knew you wanted to speak, but we're kind of done. That doesn't mean I'm not listening to you, but sort of sorted it out. What did you want to share? Yeah, I just wanted to, um, I didn't want him to take it, but like you said, it's up under his own 
with cockiness. But at the same time, like, I understand why they reduced the charges or whatever, but I still don't understand why they just didn't totally dismiss the charges, which I get now. He had a conversation, whatever, whatever. But I don't, I don't feel like my nephew did that, period. And I told him that from day one, like, when they did the body cam, all that, like, I don't think he did that. Okay. Well, I the way our house is set up, y'all, we would have heard, he would have heard her coming downstairs. And the three times and all this, this is my first time hearing about all this. That, that supposedly went on that she said because I never heard her statement so she talked to them when they asked her her name and all that other type of stuff but right. I just wanted to put it on the record that I didn't feel like my nephew did that. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that and that may have been what the trial would have come down to a sort of he said she said mm -hmm. where the jury would be deciding um, do we credit what Ms. Lopez says right. or do we credit what Mr. Favor says right. um, and that could go in Mr. Favors's favor mm -hmm. but if it didn't you know, those right. are some big dice to roll right um and it may be that ms lopez would have some specific details of well but let me tell you this and um it, it could be that that's who the jury credits i'm not saying they would that's right. that's not the decision i make i decide um based on what the state said if a jury believed what the state said would that be enough and it certainly would right. i don't know what the jury would do and and you're helping me understand that maybe ms lopez had a reason to say the things that she said. Mm -hmm. She's not here. Uh, Mr. Favors has made a, an informed choice right. um, to move forward in this way, to um, have less exposure in a different way. Right. Uh, I mostly hope that um, your two kids are doing just fine. Yeah, they are. They've been around. He's been around them their whole life. Good. So, well, he can stay around them. He just needs to have another adult around too. I get it. I understand. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for being here. All right. Um, we have time for one more plea before I need to take a break and then we can resume. So if there's someone on bond, uh, why don't we do that one? Um, and then if there are folks in custody, we'll do them afterwards. Position number 10, Mr. Yearby, ready? Okay, Mr. Yearby, why don't you come on up? Oh, and while he's coming up, um, do we know what we're doing with Mr. Sheets. Mr. Seats. Seats. Um, Seats. Just a final plea here today. Um, the state is going to leave the offer open for us. Um, okay. All right. So I, we may have, depending on how quickly the year B plea goes, we may be able to do that before the break, but he can always dial, but he's not sitting here in court. So we could always dial back in. And then position number four, Mr. Jackson, I've been on the phone with him. He says he tried to join the Zoom and it says it's on break until 1230, which I don't think is the case, but he's oh. going to keep trying. Okay. Great. We will be on break, so you can figure out a way to make that happen. And if I could announce on position 12, Mr. Shanks, he's got a doctor's appointment. Yes. He is going to do the diversion program. Okay. Um, and that's with Ms. Willingham. And you then, there's not an issue with the terms. It's just an issue of, not an issue. Ms. Willingham needs to get, does he need to sign something? Or I sent the order to Ms. Nelson already. Great. Oh, and Mr. Jackson's on the screen now. I see him. He's Perfect. He's there, so he's made it. So you can talk with him sure. in a little bit. Let's take care of Mr. Yearby. Um, can I let Mr. Shanks go then? Yes. Mr. Shanks, you're free to go. I think you need to go to the doctor. You can go see the doctor. Um, and you have a few things you need to do as part of this diversion. You might need to write a paper. You may need to go to a class or something. I don't, I don't know what the terms are. I just need to make sure that you are prepared to do those things. Yes? Great. All right. Be safe. And Your Honor, that was my last matter before the court. May I please be excused? Yes, sir. All right. Um, let's get back to Mr. Yearby. That's position 10. Ms. Nix, are you ready?
Ready? Yeah. All right. Position 10 is State versus Reginald Yearby, 23 SC 190988. Mr. Yearby, you've now sat through a few pleas this morning, so you know how this is going to work. Ms. Nix will put you under oath. You'll answer some questions, and you need to let me know if you've got any questions of your own, okay? All right. And make sure you speak up when you're answering her questions so the court reporter can hear you. Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Nix. Hey, Judge, Mr. Yearby, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any uh, statements or testimony that you shall give in the matter currently before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your true, correct, and legal name. Resident Maurice Yearby, Jr. You can put your hand down. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any medicine, drugs, or alcohol? No, ma'am. Is there a medication that you normally take that you have not taken or been given today? No, ma'am. How old are you? 32. How far have you gone in school? Attended South College. Is English your native or dominant language? Yes. You understand that you've been charged with the following offenses. Counts one through four, aggravated assault, and count five, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony? Yes. You understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? Yes. You understand that if you plead not guilty or remain silent and refuse to enter any plea at all, then the state is required to prove the charges against you at a jury trial? Yes. Have you had the opportunity to review your rights with your attorney? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney about all of the charges in this indictment against you, including the facts and circumstances relating to each charge? Yes, I have. Do you need more time to discuss the case with your lawyer, Ms. Feely? No, I do not. Are you satisfied with her services? Yes. Ms. Feely, do you waive a formal reading of the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. And do you waive any and all defects in the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. Mr. Yearby, do you remember having been arrested on these charges? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Do you remember having been arrested on these charges? Yes. Has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today? Yes. Do you understand that today you're entering a negotiated plea of guilty, which means that the state will recommend the following sentence to the court. The state will reduce counts one and two of aggravated assault to uh, reckless conduct under OCGA 16-5-60. Uh, state will null process count two and three and count five possession of firearm during commission. State will reduce to a discharge firearm near public highway under uh, OCGA 16-11-103. I need you to, I, I followed all that, except at the beginning, I thought you said one and two are being reduced, but then you were null processing. Which of the ag assaults are being reduced to reckless conduct? Counts one and two are being reduced to reckless conduct. Counts three and four, which are also aggravated assault, are being reduced to, I mean, I'm sorry, are being null processed. Okay, one and two reduced, three and four null processed, five reduced to that other offense. Got it. All misdemeanors. Okay. Thank you. And uh, state recommends a 12-month sentence probated in each case to run consecutively to each other, so a total of 36 months 
misdemeanor probation. Uh, special conditions, stay away from the Hyatt Hotel located at 265 Peachtree Street. Have no contact with Constance Dawson, uh, G-G-G-I-G-I -G -G -I Branham, B-R-A-N-N-U-M, Shakira Bright, S-H-A-K-E-R-A -E Bright, and um, Shaquan Grimes, S-H-Y-Q-U-A-N uh, Grimes. Um, the defendant shall have no, possess no firearms and complete 40 hours of community service. How many hours? 40? 40. Okay. Mr. Yearby, do you understand that that's the state's recommended sentence? Yes, I do. Do you understand that the court is not required to accept the state's recommended sentence? Yes. Do you understand that the court has the right to sentence you to the maximum possible sentence on each charge? Yes. Do you understand that since there are multiple charges to which you're pleading guilty today, the court also has the right to run those sentences consecutively? Yes. Do you understand that if the court decides to order a sentence that differs from the negotiated plea you're expecting today, that you have the right to withdraw your plea of guilty? Yes. Are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No, ma'am. Do you understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit? Yes. Do you understand that while you're on probation, you must follow all the special conditions of your probation? Yes. Do you understand that if you fail to follow all the special conditions of your probation, then you'll be subject to revocation of that probation for the balance of your sentence? Yes, I do. Do you understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, ma'am. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, I am. Uh, Ms. Feely, is, is Mr. Yearby interested in using first offender? We have had that discussion. I don't normally recommend it on misdemeanor pleas, but I'm going to leave that in uh, Mr. Yearby's decision-making power. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, are you asking to be treated as a first offender under the provisions of the First Offender Act? Yes. Have you ever pled guilty or nolo contendere to a felony in the state of Georgia? No. Have you ever pled guilty to a felony in any other jurisdiction? No, I have not. Have you ever been sentenced for any crime, whether felony or misdemeanor, under the First Offender Act? No, I have not. Has your lawyer explained the First Offender Act to you? Yes, he has. Do you understand that if you violate the terms of your first offender sentence or commit a new offense while on first offender probation, your first offender status could be revoked, uh, which means you could be adjudicated guilty and you could be resentenced up to the maximum sentence for each charge in this indictment? Yes, I do. Do you understand that by entering a plea of guilty today, you are waiving any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights, the right to trial by jury, to remain silent, to confront witnesses against you, to the assistance of counsel, to the presumption of innocence, and the right to appeal if convicted of these charges at trial? Yes. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea today? Yes, it is. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, they have not. Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes. How do you plead to the charges of two counts of reckless conduct and discharging a firearm near public highway or street in indictment number 23 SC 190988? We had talked about a kind of a modified offer because he doesn't actually remember um, this event, but he does want to accept the state's offer. So um, I guess he, if the state doesn't have a problem with just guilty under offer based on that. Will we explore why he it seems like this would be a memorable event? Um, doesn't remember because he was in a bad way at the time or I appreciate it was three years ago, but. I, I would remember something like this. He woke up and hospitalized. He had been in the Atlanta area um, celebrating uh, birthday, I birthday believe. Birthday this weekend. Over-celebrating. Over-celebrated, but we think that the, this had never happened with him drinking before, and so we think that maybe he got slipped the wrong okay. or something. Either way, so so the not recalling isn't, I'm not saying it didn't happen. It's, I can't tell you what I was doing at that time. When I regained... The ability to recall things. I was in a hospital. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, I don't have an issue with that. Um, it's a misdemeanor, so yeah. I don't know that I can even say anything about it. Okay. Um, but I can read the the Alford. No, I'll take care of that. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Yearby, are you uh, 
Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes. Do you understand that if you wish to challenge the voluntariness of your guilty plea, you must do so by filing a habeas corpus petition? Yes. Do you understand that since these are misdemeanors, you have only 12 months from today to do so? Yes. Judge, had this case gone to trial, the state would expect the evidence to show that on or about July 18th, 2021, uh, the defendant did discharge a firearm at the front entrance of the Hyatt Hotel. Uh, nearby were um, several individuals. Um, none were, were struck, but they were at risk of being injured in, um, in uh, Mr. Yearby's recklessly discharging the firearm. Discharging the firearm was also near a public highway um, or street. It was near Peachtree Street. Um, and this all occurred in Fulton County. Did the police get any information from Mr. Yearby as to why he was shooting or if that's not in the information you have? That is not in the information that I have, Judge. The um, defendant was actually um, arrested just down the street. Um, another officer who was responding uh, was flagged down um, because the defendant was having a seizure. Okay. Um, another officer noticed that he matched the description and um, the or he was the same person that he observed in surveillance footage of this mm -hmm. incident. Uh, and so that's how he was determined to be uh, the, the person who discharged the firearm. I don't believe he ever made a statement to law enforcement. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Roberts, can you sh please share criminal history information, if any, uh, Mr. Yearby? Uh, this is his only ever arrest. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hence the first offender, um, Ms. Feely. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Yearby is joining us from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He has no ties to the Atlanta area. He was down visiting. Um, this, as the court heard, he has nothing else on his criminal history and he's had nothing else since this incident date, which is why I didn't lean too hard on him to not use his first offender on a misdemeanor because he knows himself and his life better than I do. He, as you, the court heard, he's 32 now. He was 29 at the time. He's been a supervisor for the last eight years at Orange Grove, which is an assisted living facility up in Tennessee. He has two children, ages eight and two. This was just a night, as you, the court heard, he had a medical event, even he had a seizure. Um, certainly, this could have been a lot more tragic, but he does not recall um, these events. Um, and so we are asking the court to accept the state's recommendation. We um, are gonna tentatively ask maybe for a little bit less probation because he is eager to get this um, record restricted, uh, but we'll leave that in the court's discretion. Okay. Mr. Yearby, when was the last time you were back in Atlanta? Um, my mother, she actually lives here. So I come down as, as often as I can, but my job, I work, Seven, six to seven days a week, so it's pretty hard. Okay, so it's not far, but you're busy, but you do come down to um, check on your mom and be with her when you can. Right. Okay, um, but your ties are, at least through work, is that where your two kids are also in Chattanooga? Yes, sir. Do they stay with you or with their mom? They live with me. They okay. live with both of us. Okay, the mom lives with you too. Excellent. Are you married or just do you have kids together? Engaged. Engaged, congratulations. How long have you all been together? Forever. Yeah. Okay. Since high school. All right. Well, good. Um, first offender is an opportunity primarily. You earn it. This is your only arrest. This would be your first offense. And it means that you, while being under sentence, don't have any conviction when you leave today. And if you successfully complete your sentence, which I get the sense you will do, um, then this can all be wiped away, um, which seems to be your goal. And I get that. Um, the risk of first offender is that if four months from now, there's another incident, you've got a gun, something happens, you get arrested for anything, not only do you have a new issue, but I can revoke um, all your probation, resentence you. Uh, you've only pled to misdemeanors, but I have three years to play with here. And so I could say, clearly, we had the wrong sense of who Mr. Yearby was, because here he is shooting again at a hotel. Um, and all those three years could be tumbling down, not as probation, but as time um, in custody. But if you're pretty sure that whatever was going on in July of 21 isn't something that would be going on in the future, um, first offender makes a lot of sense. 
Do you feel like you understand the benefit of first offender and the risk of first offender? Yes, sir. All right. And you want to be treated as a first offender? Yes, sir. I'll do that. An offered plea is when a defendant says either I didn't do what the state says, but I want to plead guilty anyway, because trial could be risky, or frankly, I don't remember like in your situation. So you're not disagreeing with them. You just can't agree because you don't have a specific recollection, but you've decided that it's in your best interest to go forward with the plea that your lawyer has been able to get for you. Is that a fair description? Yes, sir. Okay. Then I'll accept this as an offered plea. Um, Ms. Feely, um, can we sign, someone in my office sign your name to the indictment? Yes, sir. And Ms. Nix? Yes, sir. And Mr. Yearby, is all right if we electronically put your name on the indictment indicating your first offender offered plea to the misdemeanors? Yes, sir. We'll do that. I do find there's a factual basis for pleas to reckless conduct as well as discharging a firearm near a public highway. I find that your plea is knowing and voluntary. Knowing means you've understood what we've been talking about. Voluntary means no one's forced you to do it. Do you agree with both those things? Yes, I do. Um, any questions about anything? Yes. Uh, so once I done my probation, right, all this is will be off my record. Yes. And there may be some steps your lawyer can take before then to make it hard for people to find that information. But definitely, if you successfully complete your sentence, then there's something called discharge that you'll get discharge from your first offender conviction. Um, between now and then, um, there are some things that can be done to seal the record. But that that's for you and Miss Feely to talk about. OK. OK. Any other questions? No, that's all. All right. Um, I will sentence you. Uh, did, did he spend much time in jail? Three days. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to find your position again. Um, sentence you on counts one, um, reckless conduct, 12 months, count two, 12 months, and count five, six months. Um, I will run them consecutive to each other. So that is a total of 30 months of probation, three zero. Um, special condition of probation number one is that you stay away from that Hyatt on Peachtree. It's the downtown Hyatt. Um, and then number two, you have no contact with um, the four people who felt most at risk because you were shooting that gun. Um, that's Constance Dawson, Gigi Branham, Shakira Bright, and Shaquan Grimes. Um, did you know any of those people? Total strangers. Total strangers. Don't look them up and say, hey, I'm sorry about what happened in July of 21. And finally, you'll need to do 40 hours of community service. You do not need to be in Georgia to be on misdemeanor probation. It can be call in, but you may need to have a face to face meeting with them at least to get it kicked off. So um, don't assume that you can ride home to Chattanooga and never come back for probation. You won't be required to report monthly or anything like that, although it'd be a reason to see your mom. Um, but you will in the next few days need to make that initial contact with misdemeanor probation. And maybe they say phone is fine, but if they say, no, 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 you got to come in and fill out some paperwork, don't say, well, I'm in Chattanooga, so I'm going to skip it because they'll send me a warrant and I'll sign it and everything gets turned upside down. So just make sure you plug in with them in whatever way they say, and then I'll work with you and your reality of being far from Atlanta. Okay. Yes, sir. Any questions about that? Where do I do my community service? Like, do I go through the probation to set that up also? Yep, you're going to talk with them, and they may say, as long as you can document it, you could do it at the Boys and Girls Club in Chattanooga or a church in Chattanooga. What you can't do is say, I'm doing this for my mom or my uncle. You know, it needs to be documented um, for an actual nonprofit or a church or something. But um, generally, probation says, if you can find something, great. If you can't, we can find something, but you might be picking up trash on the side of the road. So that's an incentive for you to, to find something. Just given your skill set, you're going to be able to find something where you can contribute meaningfully and get community service credit for it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Ms. Feely, anything else? Um, I am going to talk with the state about the order sealing the um, first offender while it's pending, but we can handle that. All right. Ms. Nix, anything else? Um, no, sir. Okay. Um, well, that is it. Um, for those of you on the Zoom, I need to go um, teach a class, uh, and we will resume um, at 2 o'clock. Um, we have a plea for a guy who's in custody in Department of Corrections, but we'll also pick up um, all the loose ends um, that are on now. So Mr. Jackson, Mr. Sheets, et cetera, if you coordinate with them, Ms. Feely. Okay? Yeah. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Are you talking to him? Somebody just said hello. You can mute the, please mute your devices. A uh, court has not started yet. Thank you. Hello, how you doing? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, how you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. I'm all right. I'm sorry, I'm having difficulties with my connection. Well, I can hear you. Um, what is your name? My name is Darius Seats. Okay, just stay on. Uh, the court has not started yet. Uh, okay. All right.
And one more thing. Welcome back, everyone. Dismiss. There it is. Okay. All right. Um, we are back for the remainder of this morning's final plea calendar. But first, unless something real urgent has come up, we have a plea, I hope, um, involving... Um, uh, Mr. Chapman, who is at Hayes State. So let me see if we've got him. There's Hayes State. Hey, Mr. Chapman, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Great. Um, and we have your attorney um, with the beautiful court background again. Let's add him. Fantastic. Mr. Ben Sheeta, good afternoon, sir. Great afternoon, Judge. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, before we get on the record, I just want to make sure, Mr. Chapman, that um, this is something you're ready to do. We had a conversation about resolving this last little piece of Fulton County business you had um, a month ago. It was a few weeks ago, and, and you had uh, the thought that you'd rather have a trial. Uh, Mr. Ben Sheeta and you have had a chance to discuss it more. Um, is it your intention now to enter a plea in the case, Mr. Chapman? Yes, I was going to say that I was guilty. Okay, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to walk through a few steps. I'm not asking you to say anything at all other than um, based on your more recent conversations with your attorney, you're prepared to go forward with a plea rather than we bring you back here, get a jury, and have a trial. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so the way it's going to work is that um, Ms. Nix, are you going to stay right there or where are you going to be? Yeah, I'll stay here. Great. Um, Ms. Nix, who you can see on the screen, um, is going to swear you in in just a moment. And um, then we'll go through the process that we did almost all of last time. So it's going to seem real familiar to you, but we need to do it again. Um, so we will. Let me mute that. Um, and um, we'll see where we get. I'll set the stage. This is case 23 SC 189278. It's State versus Daniel Chapman. Mr. Chapman is appearing from Hayes State Prison. His attorney is appearing virtually as well. Mr. Chapman, I asked you this last time, but I need to do it again. Are you waiving your right to be here in open court and consenting or agreeing to appear remotely from Hayes State? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and your lawyer, Mr. Ben Sheeta, is appearing probably from his office somewhere. That's That background's not wherever he is. It could be a McDonald's, we don't know, but he is not here in court. More importantly, he's not right next to you. I wanna make sure you're all right with that. If necessary, we can, hold on one second. Someone needs to stop unmuting the Sky Devices Elite. Um, uh, you and Mr. Ben Sheeta can speak privately if you need to, but he is not gonna be right there by your side um, during the conversation. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. If you need to speak to him in confidence, let me know. I'll put you all in a breakout room and we'll make it happen. So when you're oh, ready, yes. Ms. Nick. Can, yes, yes, sir. Um, can we do that? You want to talk to him for a sec? Yes, sir. You bet. Let me see if I can make this work. Before we do that, uh, Mr. Benchita, I think that the cleanest way to do the time serve is just to do um, five years commuted to time served so that um, we don't have to do certain cynicism to like you know, 1300 days, whatever it is. Yeah. All right, you two should drop into the room now when you're done, pop on back. Yes. All right, while they are talking, um, Ms. Feely, you're still here. Um, who do you have um, who we can start working through? So position four, Mr. Jackson. 
This uh, is just going to be a final plea. Here. He's here in person. He is here Came in from work. work. All right. And um, his tardiness is um, actually squarely my fault. I did the change of address form and my five looked like uh, a nine. And so it went to the wrong. Okay. So you, we, we changed his address. Your handwriting is funky. And uh, here we are. Okay. Um, Mr. Jackson, why don't you come on up to the podium um, with Ms. Feely, please. All right, Ms. Rivers, we're going to pivot to position four on the plea and arraignment calendar. It's 23 SC 187949, State versus Marcus Jackson, who is here with his lawyer. Um, Ms. Nix, what is the state's offer in this case, if Mr. Jackson wanted to enter a plea today? Yes, sir. The state's offer today, which expires today, is uh, a 10 year sentence that he served six months with the balance probated. Uh, and um, that's to count one, count two, 12 months to serve six months concurrent with count one and state with null press count three. Okay. Ms. Feely, any discovery concerns at this point? There are, but I think we'll be able to work through them. There's some reference to some pictures that I believe to be out there. And also based on the type of charge and the um, stuff in the police report, I think there's body cam probably as well, but. Okay, but none of that is interfering with your ability right now to counsel Mr. Jackson. Right, and I think this is something that will work out. Just the way things happen today, mostly my fault. Um, but this is a 2020 car accident case. So. Got it. Okay. Um, Mr. Jackson, if you were to enter a plea today, the state would recommend um, that. How much time did you spend in jail on these charges? Oh, 42 days. 42 days. Not that you don't remember. Um, the state would be requesting a sentence of six months. You'd get credit for those 42 days. So it's really a sentence of about four and a half months, a little bit more than that, followed by a whole bunch of probation. That's the state's recommendation. Today, if you entered a plea um, and I were to sentence you more than what Ms. Feely asked for, and she might say time served, the 42 days. But if I were to sentence you to more than that, you could withdraw your plea. You could say, no, thank you. Um, after today, you can still enter a plea. And it sounds like Ms. Feely thinks that's where this case will end up. Not a trial, but some, some plea. But after today, you don't get to withdraw your plea if you don't like the sentence I give you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And the state's offer of six months to serve followed by nine and a half years of probation, that expires today. Ms. Nix may decide to make that same offer in the future. But if you and Ms. Feely come knocking and, hey, we want to work this out, and she comes back and says, well, now it's nine months to serve, you don't get to rewind the clock and say, no, 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 no. I want that six month. Um, she may make that same offer. She may make a better offer, but you don't control that after today. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Understanding those things, do you want to enter a plea in your case today, or would you like me to move your case to our May 30th trial calendar? Take a no, move, move. Move to the trial calendar? Yes. Okay, you understand what that means? All that means is you're going to leave here today. You will not have entered a plea. Um, in the end, you may enter a plea, and hopefully that'll be before the 30th, because the 30th is going to be pretty crazy. There'll be a lot of people in here. Um, and that'll resolve your case. If you don't resolve your case, then you just need to make sure you're here on the 30th. And Ms. Feely is going to make sure your address is right. So there's not going to be any, where is he? He's at work. You got to be here when we call the calendar. Because okay. if you're not, I got to sign a warrant. Um, and then we'll figure out when we can try your case. If in the end, what you want is a trial. Um, right now, you've just bought a little more time between now and trial time. Okay. Okay. Ms. Feely, anything else on behalf of Mr. Jackson? So, and I will get that change of address form. So that's one. And then number two, if you could, and you may already have, but please be specific with Ms. Nix about the things you think you're missing from discovery. So she's not guessing. And then obviously if she has it, she'll push it across. And it's College Park PD. And I know that they've routinely had issues with their body cam. So sure. It, from back then, yeah, there was it may a, or may not exist. Yeah. But you'll look and provide whatever the answer is. I will. All right. Uh, Mr. Jackson, where do you work? Oh, Unify. What's that? The Scribner Warehouse. Okay. Um, and that's where you were this morning? Yes, sir. Okay. I appreciate you coming from there to here. You'll get notice in the mail next time because we'll get the fives and the nines the right way. Okay. All right. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you so much. Looks like Mr. Ben Sheeta is back. 
Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we're ready to go forward. Okay. Um, I will add you back to the spotlight, <clears throat> and I may need to pull them out of the breakout room, but I can do that. See if that works. Should yep. Did it. Great. All right, we're all back. Um, let's go back on the record in Mr. Chapman's case. Mr. Chapman, um, did you have enough time to speak with Mr. Ben Sheeta? Yes, sir. Are you ready to move forward? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Nix, when you're ready. Mr. Chapman, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony or statements that you shall give in the matter currently before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your true, correct, and legal name. Daniel Lee Chapman. How old are you? 20 years old. How far have you gone in school? 10th grade. Is English your native or dominant language? Yes, ma'am. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any medicine, drugs, or alcohol? No, ma'am. Is there a medication that you normally take that you have not taken or been given today? No, ma'am. Do you understand that you've been charged with the following offenses? Count one, aggravated assault, and count two, uh, possession of a prohibited item by inmate? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you plead not guilty or remain silent and refuse to enter any plea at all, then the state is required to prove the charges against you at a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. Have you had the opportunity to review your rights with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney about all of the charges in this indictment against you, including the facts and circumstances relating to each charge? Yes, ma'am. Do you need more time to discuss the case with your lawyer, uh, Mr. Benchita? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with his services? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Benchita, do you waive a formal reading of the indictment for purposes of the plea? We do. And do you waive any and all defects in the indictment for purposes of the plea? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chapman, has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge to which you're pleading guilty today? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that today you're entering a negotiated plea of guilty, which means that the state will recommend the following sentence to the court? Uh, in both cases, the state recommends a five-year sentence commuted to the time you've already served? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that the court is not required to accept the state's recommended sentence? Can you repeat that? Do you understand that the court is not required to accept the state's recommended sentence? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that the court has the right to sentence you to the maximum possible sentence on each charge? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that since there are multiple charges to which you're pleading guilty today, that the court also has the right to run those sentences consecutively? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that uh, if this if the court decides to order a sentence that differs from uh, what your attorney requests, that you do not have the right to withdraw your plea of guilty? Yes, ma'am. Are you currently on probation or parole? No, ma'am. Are you a United States citizen? Yes, yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you may not receive, possess, or transport a firearm? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that doing so could result in new criminal charges for which you face a sentence of up to five years? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, you also may not use a firearm in a crime in the future? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you were in the future to use a firearm during the commission of a crime, you would face a 15-year custodial sentence consecutive to the sentence for the underlying crime? I do. Do you understand that by entering a plea of guilty today, you are waiving any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses? 
Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights, the right to a trial by jury, to remain silent, to confront witnesses against you, to the assistance of counsel, to the presumption of innocence, and the right to appeal if convicted of these charges at trial? Yes, ma'am. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea today? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No, ma'am. Is it your decision to enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to the charge, charges of aggravated assault and possession of a prohibited item by inmate in indictment number 23 SC 189278? Can you repeat that? How do you plead to the charges of aggravated assault and prohibited possession of a prohibited item by inmate in indictment number 23 SC 189278? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you wish to challenge the voluntariness of your guilty plea, you must do so by filing a habeas corpus petition? And since these are felonies, you have four years from today to do so. Yes, ma'am. Judge, had this case gone to trial, the state would expect the evidence to show that on or about June 10th, 2023, uh, the defendant, Daniel Chapman, along with um, other inmates, uh, committed an assault upon the person of Deshaun Dickerson by stabbing him with a shank, uh, an object which, when used offensively, offensively, is likely to result in serious bodily injury. Uh, being in possession of a shank is a prohibited item. Uh, for a inmate to be uh, in possession of, and uh, Mr. Chapman was incarcerated at the Fulton County Jail uh, when he was in possession of of the shank, and uh, this occurred in Fulton County. All right. I don't think I need to ask a whole bunch of questions about criminal history. I do want to understand from uh, Mr. Benchita, um, Mr. Chapman's obviously in custody now for what is he in custody? Your Honor, I believe uh, it's a murder and the sentence was life without parole. Was that a Fulton County case or a different jurisdiction? I believe it was Fulton County from what I was told. Okay, you were not his lawyer for that case? No, Your Honor. Okay, got it. All right, well, let me turn it over to you. Do you have uh, anything you wanna add? Uh, no, Your Honor, we just asked, um, and just to give a little facts, uh, what the state said was true. Um, I guess before in jail, we always have these, these issues. Uh, from what I got from discovery was um, the alleged victim in this matter. Um, essentially started issues with individuals prior, um, and this was kind of like a retaliation from what it looked like. So it happened. Uh, it's not really a good self-defense for us. Uh, so it did happen. Uh, but I guess it wasn't started from my client and the other parties. Uh, but he's here taking accountability. So we'll just ask the court to uh, accept the plea. Got it. Okay. So um, in, in a larger time frame, it is in some ways quasi self-defense. But in this snapshot that a jury would see, um, it was sort of defending self and group after a previous assault. Right. right, right. Understand. Okay. Um, Mr. Chapman, is there anything you want to add or do you have any questions about anything we've discussed? No, sir. All right. Well, Mr. Chapman, I find there's a factual basis for your plea and that your plea is knowing and voluntary. Knowing means you've understood what we talked about and you told me you have no questions. Voluntary means no one's forcing you into this plea, but you've decided that's what you want to do. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Ben Shida, um, do you authorize someone on my staff to sign your name to the indictment um, indicating um, Mr. Chapman's guilty plea? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Nix, can we sign for you? Yes, sir. And Mr. Chapman, since you're way down there and we're up here, is it okay if we put your name on the indictment indicating your guilty plea? Yes, sir. All right, we'll do that. Uh, what I'm going to do, Mr. Chapman, is um, sentence you to uh, – is count to – a misdemeanor or a felony? It is a felony, and we looked this up at one of the co-defendants' plea, and the maximum is five years. Okay, so it's a one to five. Um, 
All right, um, Mr. Chapman, I'm going to sentence you to one year to serve on count one and one year to serve on count two. I will run those concurrently with each other, meaning at the same time. So your total sentence is one year. You will get credit from June 10th of last year. So you are well on your way of completing that one year. That clock will continue to run so that on June 9th of this year, which is about two months from now, you will have completed your sentence in this case. Mr. Benchita, anything you want to add um, on behalf of Mr. Chapman? No, Your Honor, that's all we appreciate. Mr. Chapman, do you have any questions now that we've reached the end of the process? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Nix, anything else? Uh, Judge, I don't know if you want to make it so that it runs, concur runs concurrently with his life sentence. I can give you that case number. I actually have it. So it'll run. Can thank you for, for flagging that. This sentence does run concurrently with 21 SC 180154. That was your case with Judge Krause. Um, and to be clear, it's already on the record, but that clock started running as of the date of the incident, which would be June 10th, 2023. So um, we'll see. I'm sure you've got an appeal cooking with your other case. That'll work its course through. Well, before you've done that, um, this case will be closed out. If there's nothing else, thank you to Hayes State for making Mr. Chapman available. And we're going to move on to other stuff here. Mr. Benchita, you're free to go. Thank you, Honor. Have a great day. You too. Judge, the last uh, co-defendant I have in this case is Mr. Pittman, who was uh, just uh, um, in front of you for a trial in another case. I don't know if, if, if y'all were able to take care of that case. I was just looking that up. We weren't. We tried. That wasn't the frame of mind in which Mr. Hiles was, but I'm going to keep working on him. Um, worst case scenario, this will go to judicial hold. Best case scenario, um, we can resolve it um, much like this one because the sentence is very similar. There's the possibility of parole, but it's a long sentence for Mr. Pittman. Okay. And did we confirm that Mr. Brown is representing him on he is. this one as well? Yes. I'll email Mr. Brown to see if, if we can just do something quick. I think he's open to that. Um, Mr. Pittman was most anxious to get on into the Department of Corrections but we're having a little issue on how to structure the sentence so he can get on his way because there was a mistrial as to the murder count and the state doesn't want to null process that. I respect that, but we need to move the appeal forward and he needs to get out of here. So we're working um, on some legal procedural stuff. For now, Mr. Pittman is still around. So reach out to Mr. Brown, please, and see what he thinks. All right. Um, Mr. Peoples is here. Um, we have remaining, look through this, uh, Mr. Phillips. Does Mr. Phillips need to come out? No, and I think he may already be gone. Did you get rid of Mr. Phillips, nap man? Okay. Um, then Mr. Sheets, that would be it. Maybe that's that. Um, there was some device that kept turning on and I muted it um, a bunch of times, but it's gone now. So it's just Mr. Sheets. Oh, you're here for Ms. Willingham. That's correct, Got it. it. Clicks on. So Mr. Seats, I keep saying Sheets, but it's Seats. Um, and again, folks at Hayes State, um, if you are ready, Mr. Chapman um, has wrapped up his business here. So thanks for your help. Um, do you want to reach out to Mr. Seats to see if he can plug back in? Oh, he's not still on there. Yes. There was a device with no name on that kept unmuting itself and creating a lot of background noise. And so I kept muting it. And maybe that frustrated Mr. Seats because that device isn't on anymore on the call. Is it a plea or it's moving? The final plea. Okay. So Ms. Roberts and Ms. Tucson, you are both free to go. I appreciate you plugging back in at two o'clock, but our uh, last thing is not a plea. Um, so, um, we will see you sometime soon. Thank you. Have a good okay, day. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I, I was, I had to go teach a class and I got back a little late. Good.
Was she the aunt of the? He's not. He's not taking If he is hard to find, I know he did connect with us for a while. I don't mind just moving it to a trial calendar, but not preserving his final plea rights based on your representation. I think we, if he was on the call, we were going to, but I understand that. Um, and I'll explain that to him when I. Okay. Is he responding to texts or? He is not, but. He... And, and Judge, I know if, if the court is inclined to move into the trial calendar, I think um, Attorney Willingham's representation is that uh, the state would leave the offer open until April 26th. Okay. Um, what is the offer? Five years probation. Completion of the family violence intervention program with 100 hours of community service. Got it. Probation it is. Um, and if you're leaving that open for a while, that gives Ms. Feely and Mr. Seats a little more time to talk about it. But um, what I will do is um, move this to the trial calendar. It's the May 30th trial calendar. I will not preserve the final plea rights um, based on your representation, Ms. Feely. Um, but given what the state's offer is, that's not a huge miss for him, okay. Mr. Seats today. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, that wraps things up. Thank you, Ms. Rivers. Um, Mr. Peoples, thanks for parachuting in for Ms. Willingham. And Ms. Nix, thanks for your work. Have a good night, Judge.